Okay, so it's 6 right p.m. Perfect. Um, mm-hmm. I would like to open up the uh, October 14th, 2019 Select Board meeting. Um, and then the first order of business is um, an executive session with Michael Tarrant, our town lawyer. So I would like to make a motion that the Select Board um, go into executive session, citing 1 VSA Section 313A2 and 1 VSA Section 313A1E. I'll second that. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to reopen um, the meeting at 645. And um, I just want to announce that um, there was no formal or binding action taken um, during the executive session. Um, so, um, there, I have a couple of adjustments to the agenda. Um, one is the uh, in the road town highway report um, to talk about the uh, Valley Lake Road, especially as it enters onto Route 14 um, by the school parking lot and the fire department annex building. And then um, there's been a question that's come up about the old recycling ramp um, by the school, um, kind of in similar area that we should um, discuss briefly tonight. Um, and is there any public comment at all? Okay, I not see you at all. Um, so we'll quickly uh, make a motion that we approve the bills for the town. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then I make a, mis- a motion that we approve the uh, minutes for the uh, September 23rd, 2019 uh, select board meeting. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> okay. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then um, I also make a motion that we approve the um, first draft of the um, what I'm calling the town highway layout hearing minutes um, from our um, layout hearing that we had on October 8th, 2019. Um, there was the understanding that there will probably be a few amendments to um, those minutes which we will review at a future select board meeting. Um, But I would like us to approve the uh, first draft um, so that we can put it onto our website. Um, Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Good. So, um, town hall roof repair. (laughs) (laughs) I guess guess we need to sign these things. Oh, right. I always forget that part. But go ahead, some bids. I have two bids in writing, and my third person told me he talked to you with his quote. <laughs> <laughs> Cost and materials. <laughs> yeah? But he didn't give a price of what that would price. be. No. Okay. sent you the draft of the three minutes for the, um, and if you could post those on the website tomorrow, or, or as draft minutes. Yeah, they're just draft minutes. So uh, these for Laura? Those are actually You just, have to sign it. Yeah, you got to sign it. And, and then, and the um, tiny little Brian space. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll give it to um, Diana, I guess. <laughs> that I have. One is from Peter Daly for a total of 2800 This is just the back roof? Yes, yeah. just the okay. little section that has the kitchen, bathroom, mm-hmm. little utility room in it. Mm-hmm. And the inside. And what would be the scope of work? Changing Putting steel on or yes, going to steel. Going to steel. Mm-hmm. And, it, and he says he shingles. Yes. yes. Okay. 
It says, removing all shingles, repairing existing underlayment and rotten plywood and rafters. Mm -hmm. And then he will do um, removal of sheetrock that's damaged inside mm -hmm. and the insulation and repair that, you know, put up the new and tape it. So that's an addition to the 2,800, is that part of the 2,800? That is the 2,800. Oh, it is, okay. Yep. And then that's the second one I have is from Woodbury Building Company, which is Elizabeth Higgins okay. over on Dog Pond Road. Mm -hmm. And her quote is $5,000. And she says that it needs to be reinforced down on the bottom sill because it looks like it's pulling away from the building. And when you look at the roof, you can actually see it sag. Mm -hmm. And hers is also taking the shingles off and repairing rafters if need be, and then doing the work inside also. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's also really, pretty close. So it's really not oranges to oranges. It's right. more one bid the foundation repair, which. Mm -hmm. Yep. How much was the second one again? Uh, 5000 5, And I don't know how to handle the third one. <laughs> well, who, who was the third bidder? Ronnie Langevin. If he hasn't given us an amount, he's had plenty of time to do it. Yeah, cost so of material. We have, we have to actually stuff. have a... Yeah, got to have paper. Yeah. 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 Everyone else has done that. So. Well, I mean, my view with this thing is we asked for a bid on the roof. Yeah. Although it is, it is a good point that, you know, um, obviously this was added on and if the, if it is pulling away from the building, um, I mean. Well, I was just getting to though is that Peter should get an opportunity to bid on right, the same right. work so we're comparing apples to apples. He, he yeah. went and he looked at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. just, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty much just the roof. Yep. Yeah, he looked at outside and inside. Yeah. So right they both had saw the same thing. Yeah. Right, we weren't asking for the, what I'm trying to get at is we didn't specify that we were doing the foundation repair to... Nope, the only thing I asked for were bids to repair roof. the roof. Right, okay. so my feeling is we either just award the roof bid based on the roof bid, if we yeah. have other work that needs to do, we might want to look at that mm -hmm. as a separate as a separate project yeah. or mm -hmm. put it back out if that's what we're going to do. Should we give well, the other person a chance to bid on just the roof? That's also a possibility. That's what I'm just saying. That's why it's tough when they don't. Yeah, when they don't bid what you asked for. Yeah, yeah that is because you know that, that should have been an add all. It should have been a. Yeah. Yeah. Because they deal with this kind of this stuff a lot. Yeah, I mean, I suppose technically we should have put together a scope of work for them to look at. But we did say the roof. The roof. Yeah. Not yeah. The foundation as mm -hmm. well and mm -hmm. stuff. And so yeah, it is. It's a little tougher, but. And not having hers that defines between just the roof and the foundation. Right, it doesn't break it down, does it? doesn't break it down at all. Yeah. No. It's one way, the way is to bid it to the person who gave you what you asked for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. Yeah. And we're running mm -hmm. short on time. Right. Yeah. I'm inclined to board the roof bid to the person who bid the roof. Mm -hmm. Just if we need your opinion. Does he have insurance? He does not, but... He can sign the paper, right? He can sign the waiver. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's my only feeling. It just, mm -hmm. it's a, this is what we asked for. Right. We can wait for this. It sounds like we should get moving on it. Yeah, right. It's damaged. definitely, yeah. the roof yeah. has to be done because right. that last take bad rain delay. that we had, yeah. the water was built up on yeah. the counter. Just and run it down onto the floor. We're so gonna, we're gonna have a good dose of rain in two days. Yes, they yep. said it was coming up. Yeah. What little bit of leaves will be gone by then? We've got rid of a lot. So we got today. another big storm. Huh? Didn't all yeah. Yeah. They're calling it a nor'easter. Wednesday, wow. Wednesday night, Thursday. Thursday. Yep. I hope two. Have a fire. Possibility of two inches of rain. <laughs> yeah. And possible place. snow. No, no, no. High up, high up. <laughs> okay. yeah, way up, like above twelve hundred <laughs> feet above my house. <laughs> so maybe, uh, okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we right. hire Peter to fix the roof. Okay. We I'll should. That. Okay. And then in part of my okay. discussion, that we should probably take a look at the foundation. If it is an issue, we should probably make a separate. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that probably won't happen this year. Right. Because right. we are getting yeah. pretty late. Yeah. Getting the roof done. Nothing against this start. person. It just yeah. makes it tough to make a decision and yeah. be yeah. under a time constraint. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because we definitely need to get it buttoned up against yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the larger part of the building. Yeah. Now, can Mr. Daly do that this fall? Oh, yes. Yes, okay. Yep. He ha he's only doing two and a half to three days for the town, so he has a couple days plus the weekends that he can work on. Okay. So, so um, all those in favor of hiring Peter Daly to fix the roof at the town hall? Aye. Aye. Okay. So then we will tell him it's just the roof, not the inside. Well, he's fixing no, the sheetrock insulation. Yeah. It's just it's not the place. foundation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and that's all. That's all. But then, need. if you go back and fix the foundation on a later day, is it going to crack that really sheetrock? I haven't gone and, and looked at the issue. That's the dangerous part with that, because it was one person view on what the problem was. Do we need engineering? Do we need? Right. Uh -huh. He can take a look at it too when he goes and. Yeah, I mean, we should probably look at that issue. I'm not saying it's not an issue, but we just should determine yeah. what... I mean, it's basically two separate buildings that are on different foundations, and, you know, things move. And, right. Um, so that, that's what's happening, I think. So, so I guess what I would say to that, if you talk to him, my view is if he could look at that, and if he feels like he can't fix the roof or sheetrock without Fixing foundation, it. we'd have to visit the foundation issue, maybe mm -hmm. have a special meeting. Mm -hmm. And then in that case, we'd have to put it back out to bid again, right? Potentially, but we could have a special meeting where we invite both bidders back to... Right. Right, you see I'm going with that? I just, yeah. Because yeah. I wouldn't hate to have fix it, and then, oh, we jack it up and smash it all. Right. That was yeah. my thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or just do the roof and not do the sheetrock. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if we could do that. We could, and just put the insulation back for now. And yeah. Do that as a separate bid. But have a look at the foundation. We can talk one of us about Absolutely. if it looks stable. Yeah. yeah. I've never looked at it, so I wouldn't I haven't, tell I haven't you. Looked at it. I because she, she showed me one place where I would say it would be about the middle of that addition. Pole. There is a post there, and the building's not even on that post. It's kind of up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me crawl uh, under there and look. Okay. Uh, I haven't been that mm -hmm. curious before. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's move on. Um, let's see if Brandy can come in and. Brandy, we're all set for the. So does that mean Peter's going ahead with? Yeah, we've we've awarded awarded the, yep. the the contract or the bid to to Peter. Yep. And, um, oh, and then before he does anything to the sheetrock and stuff, you guys are going to look at. Um. Yeah, I guess he'd start on the roof. Yeah. I mean, he, that includes the materials for the sheetrock, too, so he can order it, and then before he actually does the work, have it, have the stuff there to do the work. Right. And then I guess, you guys yeah, can make a decision. replace all the damaged sheetrock with it and any rotten wood. Yeah, so he would do the roof first anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we could, maybe by then we could take a closer look at that. Have a yeah. site visit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, field trip. Field trip. Yeah. <laughs> Is it on, like, this cement? Um, no, they're round pillars. wooden pillars. Oh, so it's actually... It looks like it's a little bit bigger than a telephone pole. Hmm. Okay. I wonder if you could just show it. Well, this is a spot where it's not even touching on the joist, where you could just shin that. That's what I'm thinking. So the question is, why did it... Yeah, why, why, why is it... Yeah. Anyway. And how long has it been like that? I mean, yeah. Has it been like that since it was put on there? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's the contract says that he needs the money up front to order this stuff. So, just so you know. Half of it. Half, yeah, not yeah. half the amount. Um, just I enough guess. to get materials. Um, so, we should. S would you see? I guess well, let's ask our town treasurer. Uh, should, should we write up a, co a contract yeah. based Typically on this? Typically, it's, it's based on in, an invoice. I'll let you guys do your. Continue. <laughs> so I'm, I'm asking our town treasurer, should we, should the town um, write up a contract for Peter Daly based on what he has itemized in his bid? Um, uh, this is set up for us to sign or... Um, an there needs to be a contract. needs to be a contract, okay. So, um, 
So we'll create a contract this week, mm -hmm. and then um, and we'll get it get it signed and get going on the work. And yeah, usually in in, in a contract, there's um, a deposit for half half of the half of the bid, and that covers materials. And then the, there's a final invoice when the work is all done. Yeah. So okay, all right. So we'll, we'll put together a contract. So I'll hang on to this for now. Okay. Yeah, I made myself coffee, okay. so. All right. Try not to lose it. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's more. Yeah. You can okay. always hope. <laughs> okay. So I've requested um, Tom Beers, my assistant, when he does the bank recs. Um, can you, when I was doing the minutes, uh -huh. um, I realized that even though I've heard you say it for quite a while, quarterlies and bank recs, mm -hmm. When I was writing it out, I said, I don't know, I don't really even know what that means. Could you just briefly explain what the quarterlies and the bank recs are that Tom Beers is reviewing? Okay, so um, going there... down the schedule, so the federal tax deposit, mm -hmm. I do, it's weekly. Mm -hmm. So those deductions, so I pay them electronically, mm -hmm. and then quarterly, there is an online reconciliation. Uh -huh. So he comes in, mm -hmm. he prints out a report in Nimric, goes mm -hmm. in, logs into um, EF, mm -hmm. PTS, and then um, basically Reconciles. just makes sure that my numbers are exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next one is um, Beamers. I do it monthly mm -hmm. for the retirement. Mm -hmm. There's also a quarterly reconciliation. Mm -hmm. He logs in, checks my numbers, makes make sure it, mm -hmm. it's just a second set of eyes. Okay. Bank recs, again, it's just making sure that it, money was deposited, mm -hmm. money was taken in. Mm -hmm. um, and the, and so. Okay, that's good. I just didn't I didn't understand what even though I've been hearing them for a long time, I realized I didn't really understand what yeah, that there's was. There's the Department of Labor. Yeah. Um, that's done quarterly. Mm -hmm. And he does, I have him do that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, everything is checking over everything I've done for mm -hmm. payroll. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So I set, when we had Nimra come in, Cynthia, at one point, um, if I handed you the report, it's like a seven page report of reconciliation that Tom does. Mm -hmm. The, if you look at the difference, it, it shows that it's zero and it's reconciled. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't show you how much is outstanding, um, like checks that haven't cleared yet, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. So she had, um, so it's just something simple I have him create now. Mm -hmm. um, bank balance, outstanding checks, outstanding deposits. If I did the deposit in Nimric, um, in September, mm -hmm. but there was the holiday, Labor Day, right. it didn't get into the bank until, mm -hmm. so that was carried over. So mm -hmm. I created this for him. He's going to be doing it monthly now. Mm -hmm. And then this is the report for August for the checking. Um, it's reconciled. And then this is the money market, and it's just showing that it's reconciled. Okay. Yeah. That way it's just another report that you guys mm -hmm. get to see mm -hmm. that he does. Um, mm -hmm. There was no decision made on this, correct? Are we still going from the percentages? Mm -hmm. This is uh, Swenson's deposit that was put in the uh -huh. bank um, on the 11th. Yeah, no, we haven't, we haven't decided that yet. But, um, so do I still go from the same percentages? Do we... Want to make a do you want to make a decision on that? Well, um, yeah, we we've had it on the agenda. So but, I haven't um, done a journal entry to put it in our, into okay, our system. So um, this money is in the bank, but it's not in our system yet. Okay. So. Uh, it's not worn for tonight. Um, so c could it wait till the next select board meeting? It can. Okay. I really um, like let's, making money in the money market. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't get a let's go. Let's go by our, our old percentages, the okay. present ones that okay. we have, and we'll um, we'll just we'll have that on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so let me write that down. Swenson. 
Brian. Thank you. Balance sheet, financial statement, and due to, due from. Thank you. Money is rolling in. Wow, well, it's going to happen this time I have over a $200,000 deposit on my desk as we speak. Mm. So, rushing this right along. The last, so we've had a three week span. Um, for property taxes, I've taken in four hundred and six thousand four hundred thirty-eight dollars and three cents. Um, that being said, I have done a transfer of two hundred fifty-five thousand over into the money market. Other smaller um, access permit, adopt an author for the library, um, records restoration percentages for recording that have come in. Land records recording, land records copies, um, map recording, posting, land postings, vault fees, and zoning permits. Um, delinquencies over the three last three weeks, um, $8,976.12. Balance sheet, we are down to, may I? Yep. $32,417.18 for delinquencies, that's mm -hmm. what we're down to, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah, it is good. Cool. So I still have 1.6 to collect for um, right here property taxes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Still current. Yep. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> and I've created this nice little. Thank you for keeping track of that. So I called them today, mm -hmm. and they had given me this. It's not on here. This amount, as far as what was due for the hearing, which we have not received. Yeah. And then of course tonight's Tonight. expense. Yep. So we are at. That amount without tonight's fees in it. Okay, that'll grow. Yep. No way out of it. Yep. It's not over yet. So I will keep this in the vault. Thank you. And yeah, add thank to it you. as to keep a record of that, yeah. for copies and check numbers and good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I will be definitely making another um, transfer of money mm -hmm. um, as soon as I slide these checks to my check scanner. Okay. Did you see my little post-it note on one of the bills? I did not. Oh! We got a bill from, I think it's D&M something or the yeah. petroleum. They charged us for coming and doing an estimate for installing the above ground storage tank. Oh, that's nice. And they never mentioned, you know. Greg they didn't don't get say anything to me. He no, signed it and handed he it to me. He probably didn't, yeah. So I'm going to call him tomorrow and tell him that no one, you know, that I received other estimates from other companies. And that did not charge. That did not charge, and they didn't tell me that they were going to charge to do an estimate. So ah. I, I, I so refuse to pay that. That being said, I still have a check left over from three weeks ago for that $50. Yes, I did call the, the fellow from the underground storage tank, and he said it would be good for the town to pay that $50. Okay. It's basically insurance in case there's any... Um, contamination gotcha. in the soil. When they so okay. so okay. they're going to be digging it up. If there is something, then that $50 will be our insurance to okay. not have to pay. I will um, mail that up so, today then. Yeah. And I would imagine that with when we have an above ground storage tank, there will also be a yearly fee, something, something like that. Of course. So, but, okay. Yeah, yeah. So these guys will be in the select board orders in the filing cabinet mm -hmm. with the. Okay. Okay. That way there's backup mm -hmm. if we ever. If you have, Ever want numbers that are in there. Okay. Great. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Anything. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. We have that. Both of those. All right. So, um, Diana sounds like she's busy out there. So, um, let's move on to the Route 14 RCT commuter bus. And, they haven't started running yet. No, they've got delayed. Um, let's see. So um, the startup date was supposed to be October 7th, um, and then there was a note that it's been postponed to uh, November 4th, and that the afternoon schedule has been changed slightly to better accommodate uh, state employees on uh, their schedule. Um, I have not yet contacted anyone about the um, parking at the the different um, uh, sites for picking up. And I was um, 
One thought I had was, I wonder if you know, that I drive by the school parking lot when the school's in session and there's a lot of empty space there. I wonder if that could be a, a Potentially, stop, yeah. stop and you know, parking and we'd have to make sure the school is okay with Yeah, because they leased the it now from us. Right. Yeah, yeah um, they may not want extra they cash. Not want the kids and it may be a liability issue yeah. just with yeah. the kids, um, which is fine. Um, but, um, and I haven't checked with um, uh, Jeff um, Thompson about the um, parking lot out right here. So, but I will do that. Um, and one of the questions that they had um, <coughs> for us last uh, time was um, they are going to be seeking appropriations from the different towns that they'll serve. Um, and I think it would be like a $500 per year so appropriation. Warning. Right. They, what we would have to do is, according to the town's policy towards these appropriations, um, they would have to um, you know, run a petition and get 5% signatures. And we told them at the meeting last time that if they wrote up the text for the petition, we would um, try to get the signatures for them. Um, and then there was also the question about um, an appropriation that we would give to um, them rural community transport for this fiscal year. Um, do of uh, $500 also. Um, and I'm just wondering if, if we want to do that or we want to wait until the next fiscal year. Um, we could um, appropriate $500 to that bus um, company, um, rural community transport, for this year. Um, if we wanted to, or we could wait and, and hold off until um, the beginning next fiscal year. Yeah, well, it would be the beginning. If we had it warned on the town meeting, it would begin um, on the beginning July of the fiscal 1st, year, right? July 1st, 2021. Um, I'm fine either way. I'm, I don't really, I'm not advocating for... Uh, I'd almost hold business. off on it a little bit, just to kind of see if they... I kind of want to speak and see if get see any riders or not. Or, okay. Yeah. All right. Like to see what kind of yeah response they get. They you know, I don't have a strong opinion either way. It's just right. as yeah. much right. if you want to ride it, then I'm perfectly fine. With right. It, but. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what we'll do is um, I'll contact. Um, I can't remember the fellow's name. Um, it's in the minutes from the last meeting, but I'll contact RCT and ask them to put together text um, for a petition to have um, yeah. um, an appropriation warrant on the town meeting. Um, and then we'll, um, you know, we'll put it out here and maybe put something on front porch forum about it and, and try to get the signatures for them. Um, okay, um, Diana, are you available now? Okay. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. Right enough, Robin. Robin. Good. <laughs> <laughs> she's, had, she's had enough. She's had enough. <laughs> Can't take any more. Is Kirk signed off on the storage out yet? No. When do you expect that if this is project supposed to happen this fall? Um, I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do you expect Have you got increase? a crystal ball? <laughs> they just sent them another email that I say I'm forging ahead and I haven't heard from either one of them. I know Kim, I, Kim was going to be away mm -hmm. for part of this week. But, um, yeah, I see that's still our only thing that's well, it's not. not our only thing. Not the only thing that's something else. Well, <laughs> where do we get? <laughs> where? <do we> get? <laughs> that's the way it is in Boston. <laughs> I just as well. There's that darn. You know, I'm still praying we can have a closing this week. But there's two things. There's Sarah being on bereavement leave for her husband's death. Although her staff seems to be on top of the paperwork. Um, but, uh, you know, when it comes to signing off and scheduling up closing and stuff, I just don't know. you got to have two signatures from the owners of the property. Well, that too. Yeah. And then there's... Uh, I'd love to see that happen as soon as possible, just yeah. so that we know what's going to happen. Yeah, well, you <laughs> would be both. <laughs> yeah. Then I was thinking, like, uh, when, it, when we do have a closing, how many different people do I have to schedule to be there? I was elected as the agent to transfer real estate. Yep. Mm -hmm. So but so I looked up the statute and all it talks about is conveyance. It doesn't talk about transfers in. Mm -hmm. So I'm just writing a little uh, 
email to Paul Gillies, he should know the answer. Yeah. It's a municipal kind of question. Mm -hmm. So whether that means I could sign for the closing or do I have to have a selectman there? Mm -hmm. So anyways, we had a very nice, <clears throat> very uh, educational pre-construction meeting last Monday morning. Brian was there, Skip was there, Kim was there, Chris was there, uh, Bart from Catamount Environmental was there, Blue, Blue Mountain, the two guys from Blue Mountain, the main contractor were there, and a couple people from VTrans. And uh, I set up the table, but we just all sat and stood around yeah. mm -hmm. and talked for a few minutes. I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I felt really uh, encouraged that the guys knew what they were doing. The guy um, from Catamount is, they have written, oh no, they're subcontracted with Clay Point. Kyle Austin from Clay Point mm -hmm. to do the paperwork part mm -hmm. of it. So mm -hmm. uh, Kyle has just sent this report to the state. Uh, reference to a request for alternative work practices. What they are planning to do, and I guess this is why it's so expensive, their, their bid was like $40,000, or half of the total, is to take that whole old section down and put it in the dumpster, and bring it to the hazardous waste yeah. section of the um, landfill, wherever that is, if that is. And uh, well, one thing they talked about is whether they need any um, water or electricity because there aren't any on site. And I suggest asked if uh, the uh, fire department truck, because he mentioned, you know, I said, well, Chris has a hose bib, but then he said something about needing a fire hose. And so I asked about the fire trucks, mm -hmm. the fire department's pumper truck. And they said, yeah, that would be great. And uh, so I asked fire chief, and he said, if the town is willing to pay Tim for those hours of work mm -hmm. at his regular getting someone wage. To speak, physically getting someone to yeah. be there, because I don't, I, if, if I remember what we did, they tore all those buildings down in Newport. They wanted somebody there misting water yeah. on the thing. To as keep they the were, dust. Yeah. Right. The, yeah, so, so again, I, I, if he can call me, just let me know what that need is. Right. Because if it's just drop a load of water off, that's easy. If it's yeah. somebody needs to be there all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. where I don't know the yeah. answer because I, yeah. I doubt I can get anybody during the day because everybody's working. Mm -hmm. Except that's Tim. Tim, right? Yeah. We've, so we've historically, he yeah, yeah, we've historically, like when Dana was on, he would mm -hmm. use the fire truck town, just paid him as a town highway employee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's okay. I don't object guys? to that at all yeah. as long as you're well, willing to. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be it makes sense to me. Just yeah, yeah. one less. You know, there's a potential they'll may need to help Tim some if he's got to move yeah, the pump or if he's got to have some hands. Because yeah. day's tough for us now. Everybody's got jobs, so yeah. You know, sure. So the uh, attorney did uh, send a draft uh, of the deed to Lauren Oates, and then we got to wait for her to approve that. Mm -hmm. um, and the and she has sent a new purchase and sales agreement to us. Is that happening? That was the voluntary transfer um, yeah. agreement. That's the one I'm waiting for the okay. uh, owners to sign, and then okay. we'll have to sign that too. Okay. Uh, now, do you have any idea of a timeline on that when you're going to get it back from no. them so we no. can keep moving? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we, um, anyways, uh, waiting. For, yeah, so I got to wait for Lauren. I didn't hear anything from anybody today, so I don't know whether everybody took the day off. Well, today was a holiday, it's it's a holiday. Not, but everyone and the banks are off. Everybody else is off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's whatever day they're calling so, it. So, mm -hmm. in the uh, closing, the settlement statement, um, I figured out they didn't realize this, but we don't have to pay property transfer tax. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why we would have to pay title insurance, which I ask the attorney that because we're never going to sell the property we can't sell the property mm -hmm. right so why would we need title insurance mm -hmm. and then there's a few hundred dollars in there for filing fees and i wondered if that's you know when they send the stuff here and i put it in the books and if it's okay with you guys i think it would be nice to waive that because mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of wiggle room in our budget for, for that, that. Mm -hmm. yeah. that okay um so, um, we might need an official motion for that. 
Is it just okay to say we all agree? Yeah. I agree. I Agreed. 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 <laughs> we're just paying, our, we're paying ourselves. Why would you do that to ourselves? Yeah, right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Lauren has made it clear that they're going to pay 50, you know, 75% of the 57.5, and that's it. We have some, we have a legal budget too, mm -hmm. but it's probably not enough in there for what we're going to need. So. Well, plus they're spending it elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, the environmental site assessment, the phase one, which was done the second time mm -hmm. with money from the Brella program, <coughs> I held them off. You know, they wanted to start it last winter, and I held them off. They didn't do it until April, but mm -hmm. April 16th, April 18th was, or April 19th was the date, and that's like six months. Right. And if, if you don't get it done in six months, you got to do it again. You have to have it updated. And I just saw an email. I asked him this morning. I said, What happens? I mean, if it's just the Brella thing, which really doesn't have anything to do with FEMA, um, does, it, does it matter? Or can we do it after the closing? Mm -hmm. And uh, the answer I got back was that she said, it, she read me the part of the, wrote the part of the statute that says it has to be done before closing. So then I asked her again, before closing, capital letters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so silly because, you know, the place has been gone over with a fine tooth comb yep. five times. Now, one of the things that the guy from Catamount said was that they, they would, for them, they would send down somebody early on, you know, like the first thing they would do to send down a dumpster and guys to go, or maybe even a truck, guys to go in and take out those miscellaneous things like the ballast, the, you know, the light fixtures and the mm -hmm. can of paint here and a can of oil there and mm -hmm. a bunch of little stuff that was all identified in the phase two report. And then he suggested that Blue Mountain could start on the barn end mm -hmm. while they're doing the, the asbestos yeah. end. Mm -hmm. That would be... Good. And the people from VTrans, you know, they need their 1111 permit, and I filled out part of it, and Brian signed it while we were there, mm -hmm. and then gave it to the contractor, and he'll finish it. They have because they're working in the right of way. They have yep. to explain what their mm -hmm. um, traffic control will be, mm -hmm. and and uh, Jeremy from Blue Mountain really didn't think they're going to be in the road at all. Right. If they do, if something happens, and they need <coughs> to hire. Traffic control, that's pretty expensive, and it's not in their mm -hmm. budget. They, right. they didn't plan for that. So. Yeah, like they, the way they talked, they planned on setting up towards the barn and yeah. pulling it all that yeah, way. Yeah, the road. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Our engineer came to that, too. But right. Mm -hmm. So what, when were they supposed to start on this? Do you, did they give you a rough Why do you keep asking me that question? It's running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> you had the snow pushed back till January. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right in with it. We got the town roof we got to do too. That's what we are hoping like that. Yeah. Everything yeah. goes good. It's 14. Yeah. Time is running short. When is it going to snow? You know that? Yeah. If you knew that. <laughs> exactly. Last year, November 3rd. Uh, they can't start until we own the property. That's, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's the other thing. It's really yeah. closed, yeah. So, Lauren did mention at one time that maybe she would write a, a letter to the Brella people, to uh, Linda and Trish in the Department of Environmental Conservation, and explain the exits and circumstances, and maybe get us an extension to that six months, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, she could try. I don't know. I, it, wouldn't, work, it wouldn't hurt if she tried. You could yeah, ask. Really. How much really. does this study cost again? About $4,000. I know, we've done it twice. That was the first thing we did. We got a grant from the Woodbury Fund to finance the first environmental site assessment. That one was only like $2,500. They're kind of worried that things that got more easy. stuff going on since... Yeah, it's people just... have been in there pouring oil on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Make it stop or he just make it stop. <laughs> I think I am going to have to ask you to sign that voluntary transfer agreement. Got to get it moving. It is so close to not being able to do this year. Yeah. Yeah. We're unfortunately. I hope they sign it and get moved on. Yeah, you would think it's not. It's not due to lack of effort. Yeah. 
so this is basically um, the amount that was agreed to. Well, actually, it's 57.5. But they're saying that all it is understood by all parties that the proceeds from the sale shall first be applied to all liens on the property, including real estate taxes, which are due. And the taxes that are due are about $1,700. But if we take this 57.5 and they give back 1,500 of it, they'll have their $56,000 that we agreed to pay. And would be like, like $200 or something like that, which I think we can figure out. Mm -hmm. I'll take it out of my pocket if I have it. It's on camera. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and also it says, says something where that they were in the uh, deeds, draft deed, it said something about we would waive the proration of taxes, which is fine, because if we prorated the taxes for this year and they had to pay like July, August, September, October, it's still only a couple hundred dollars. So. Uh, but basically this says... No fixtures, materials, or improvements may be removed. Da, da, da. The seller understands. Not permit any materials to be salvaged at this time or any time without demolition. But it was very nice that the guys from Catamount said that if Kim is st if those stoves in there that Kim wants are still in there, they would help her get them out mm -hmm. because she can't get to where it is because that white door has a. I guess a bar across the back uh -huh. of it. Sure. And this is also um, seller should not remove any property. One of these anyways um, explains that the town will not go after them for um, if this doesn't happen that the town will come back and go after them for adverse possession or something like that. Why would we want to sign that? Uh, be, well, we've already said we wouldn't, you know, mm -hmm. in the previous one. That gives them no reason to continue on, though. Except the, for the money. Except for the money, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That may not mean... The seller anything. understands this is a voluntary transaction and the seller is not entitled to relocation benefits. Provided by uniform relocate. Well, I mean, this is for a, like a housing thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, just trying to make sure that it's all voluntary on the part of the seller, that we're not trying to take their property. So, mm -hmm. if you want to. Then the legal description, Exhibit A, is just a copy of the old deed. And this one that they also have to sign certifies that they haven't received any other flood benefit funding from any other agency, which uh, shouldn't be difficult for them to sign. So are you guys okay with signing this? You had that question about the... Yeah, I don't know if that lets them off the hook if they back out. Or if Kirk doesn't sign. Well, we can do a tax sale. <laughs> well, it says that you can't take it for taxes. On no, there, right? no, it just, no. I don't this is adverse possession. Yeah, you can't mm -hmm. go after them for. And this is this I'm is not, not, what are this we, is representative of the agreements that you've carried out through the whole process. That, right. right. Yeah. Then I would be okay with it. I understand mm -hmm. what Brian's saying, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's hasn't. I don't think we mm -hmm. want to change the substance of it now. Because we did discuss that two years ago in mm -hmm. July when we did the original negotiation of the uh, purchase and sale agreement. Mm -hmm. We wanted assurances that, uh, that if the town bought it, then we wouldn't go after them for bank right. taxes. Don't find it. This is for the seller. Okay. <clears throat> no, that we wouldn't go try to get it in another way. We didn't say anything about taxes. We did say that the town would pay the taxes. But if he backs out on that, through some then, other means, right, what say. right, exactly. It didn't mention tax sale because if something happened and it just didn't go ahead, we, our bets are off. 
Right, you could still throw it up there. Yeah. They're going to like now. Right. Yeah. So, that's about all I've been working on lately. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't have a closing date yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. Uh, no. Good thing that this is all I have in my hand. <laughs> Here, you want this? This has got some half to it still. It's still wandering. <laughs> Maybe I'll get some more news tomorrow. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah I hope so. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Diana. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Um, briefly, I just wanted to talk about the um, Woodbury Energy Plan proposal. This was on the, um, we talked about it briefly uh, at our last meeting. Um, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission has a, a kind of a, a multi town grant that they're um, working on uh, one of the towns dropped out so um, you know, the fact that we are, have just recently um, made an agreement with them to um, have them work on the help us work on the town plan they asked if Woodbury would be interested in um, in uh, taking part in the, the this energy plan program that they're working on would there be no cost to the town it is something that many towns are starting to um, put together now. It's it's partly um, to you know planning for different um, uh, alternative energy sites um, and also you know planning that would also protect a town from having sites put in the town where many people the town may not wish to have them. There. So it's a plan that would regulate. Alternative energy like solar panels and wind right. and development. Yeah, and and any kind of any kind of energy um, program. Yeah. Um, and then at the last meeting, uh, Norman Atkin had some questions about it, um, and so you know Brian and I decided that we, well, and what does the planning commission you know is in favor of doing this? Um, it would be part of the work that we're doing on the town plan. Um, so, but they also need the select board approval in order to um, to add the Woodbury's name to this to this grant. Um, so Norman was wondering about the town that um, did drop out and why. Um, so you know, so I sent um, the questions that Norman had to Claire Rock, um, who is a senior planner at the Center of Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, so Norman was wondering what town dropped out and why, um, where was the money coming from that was paying for this work, for the grant work, and then would the plan hamper any individual efforts uh, to any type of um, alternative energy siting. Um, so um, Claire's answers were there was a town of Washington that dropped out of the hearing. Um, there were some um, planning commission members that um, felt that the town didn't um, need to um, to worry about this process. So um, they couldn't come to an agreement, I guess, on, on whether to do this or not. So they, they dropped out. Um, so she said, at this time, the Washington Planning Commission doesn't feel the need to have substantial deference during the Section 248 permitting process, which is um, one of the prime reasons why a town would go through this. Just give you a, a say. It would give you a say if you if we the towns that don't have this energy plan, they just don't have a say because they haven't really you know. It basically goes to the public service. He goes yeah, yeah, and that's what the act section two forty eight permitting process is through the public service board. Um, you know, not that the a plan would be a guarantee that it wouldn't happen either, but it does. You it does at least get to participate. Yeah, get to participate. Yeah. And so, and she, to Norma's question of where the money is coming from, it's, she said it was coming from the Public Utility Commission. I don't know whether that's federal or state. Um, has provided funding to the Regional Planning Commissions to assist towns with this work. Um, the expectation is to provide a town with a draft enhanced energy plan, um, which meets the PU Public Utility Commission standards. Um, and I don't no quite what that means either. Um, so, but the plan is, is designed, isn't designed to identify 
individual restrictions, rather the, the premise of the plan is to help towns identify action steps towards increasing energy efficiency across various different sectors, um, not just the siting of renewable energy, and with the eye toward increasing usage of renewable energy and working toward the state comprehensive plan, which is to have 90% renewables in the state by 2050. Um, He's got a smirk, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically what we would do is be, we would um, be asking the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to uh, help the town um, put together an, an energy plan that which would be then become part of the the town plan that, that we'll also be working with. It would with. have to be adopted too. Yeah, it would right, have to be right adopted. We'd have to consider right. and adopt it. There is a public hearing um, next Monday night, which is the usual planning commission um, meeting night at the town library um, to go over this um, the energy plan. Uh, Claire Rock will be there. Um, and you know, people, residents in town are invited to come in and give input into what they would like to see in the energy plan um, or not see. Um, what time is that one? It's at 6 o'clock yeah, in the community room at the library. Yeah. Um, so we could wait until then. There is kind of a time crunch. Um, I asked Claire that. Um, she said that our funding will end at the end of the year. So we are a little pressed to get started so we can complete the draft by mid-December. For Woodbury, we envision meeting with you and the Planning Commission or the Select Board to develop the draft within the two months and then work more closely with the town and residents in refining the plan and folding it into the town plan for official approval next year. Um, basically for the official approval of the new town plan that, that um, that they'll be helping us put together. Mm -hmm. um, there's no real reason not to do this. There's no, there's, it, You're not no, committing to anything. No, it's not, not committing to anything. Approval. It won't yeah. cost us anything. Yeah. Um, and, you know, starting next week, we'll be getting more input um, beyond <coughs> the Planning Commission and the Select Board into mm -hmm. what would actually be, be in it. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I, th I think it's just basically whether we think that this is. A good idea to to do, um, and you know my personal opinion is that yes, it is. I, I know that a few years ago there was a developer interested in putting some wind turbines on the the ridge that basically the uh, EB High yeah, property. Don't find my house. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, Meyer family um, basically did contact different town entities to get their feel for it and pretty much everybody in town was not in favor of it so yeah. they told the developer um, that's sorry, pretty good yeah sorry um, but um, so um, I mean it does it's not a guarantee I mean what it does basically is help the town plan for you know if there are places in town that might um, be suitable sites or you know it would help the town maybe finding grant money to help people tighten up their homes, um, you know, just different, there's more to it than just wind turbines or solar panels, you know, it's a, a lot of the focus right at the moment is helping people with older homes um, um, to tighten them up so that they use less energy. Mm -hmm. um, so, that, and that would be another part of, it, of the energy plan. I'm okay with it. Yep. Okay, so I will make a motion just so this is official that we um, v vote in support of the Planning Commission's um, pursuit of um, becoming a part of this this block town grant with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to help the Planning Commission develop an energy plan component for its town plan. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Good. And we'll learn more about it um, next next Monday. So let's see. We'll check that off the list. Um, so we're on to the town highway report. Um, so uh, let's see. Here we go. Um, so we still haven't made a formal de decision on um, 
taking out the loan for the uh, truck replacement for not this winter but next year um, and for the uh, loan um, for the purchase of the um, the Burma and the Moor, um, which is a little more complicated and um, and we, we kind of held off on these because we wanted you to be here. Sure, too. yeah. Yep, yep. Um, so the, the truck replacement is pretty clear. It's just, a, um, you know, it would, both of these would be line of credit loans that we would have with the, um, with the Union Bank. Um, it would be a seven-year loan with, uh, for the truck, and I can't remember the terms now. Um, I think I might have it on the phone. I have it on my computer. Yeah. Um, we would probably use, make a first payment when the cabin chassis arrived next summer, and then we would make a final um, installment on the loan, um, payment from the loan um, to pay when the truck arrives at the town garage next uh -huh. fall. Um, and then we, we do have it set up so that we could begin defer the payment to the following um, fiscal year, uh, 21, October 1st, um, which kind of helps with the yeah, cash flow. Yeah. yeah. So um, I will make a motion that we, um, I should have that. You forgot my phone. Oh my God. <laughs> I got my state pagers. They can find me. They can find me. That's why I said that I've worked all day. They can page me if they need me. Let's see if I have it in here. It's for the pieces of equipment. Okay. Um, so, um, the terms of the truck replacement loan are for 3.5% for seven year term. Um, and I don't know what the actual yearly amount would be. I think it was around $21,000. Uh, it was too many meetings ago that we. <laughs> Um, this is for the equipment. Here we go. I found it, Brandy. So, um, okay. So I would like to make a motion um, that we uh, accept the loan um, um, offer with the Union Bank for the plow truck uh, replacement um, at a 3.5 interest rate um, over seven years uh, with a yearly payment of $21,680.81 um, and, and that the, the loan, first loan payment would be October 1st, 2021. Um, it's a line of credit uh, loan um, where we would be using one, we're taking one payment from the loan um, uh, on uh, sometime next summer, and then the final payment when the truck arrives. That the total um, for the loan um, would be a hundred and it will be ninety one thousand seven hundred and sixty five dollars and seventy four cents. Shall I state that all again so it's a little more coherent? I understand it. Okay. It. Did you get it? What was that number again? Ninety-one. Ninety-one thousand. We're getting sixty thousand um, dollars as a trade-in. So the total of the the loan is one hundred and fifty-one thousand seven hundred and sixty-five and seventy-four minus sixty thousand. So it'd be ninety-one thousand seven hundred and sixty-five dollars and seventy-four cents. Is the total of the loan. Um, so do I hear a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, um, can you go over the information for the equipment um, that we're planning on uh, also taking the loan out for, um, just for Paul's benefit? Um, I had uh, I had mentioned that there was a zero interest loan that the uh, state treasurer's department um, offers for towns for um, buying um, equipment. It's called the Vermont Municipal Equipment Loan. Um, turns out that it wasn't a zero percent. It's a zero percent interest loan if more than one town is involved. Yeah. Okay. If you share. Yeah. So with one town involved, it's a two percent interest loan. Horrible. Yeah. Um, and then. Um, so we don't have another town going in on us with these. No. 
No. Okay. Um, and also, um, they would pay 75, 75, the loan would be for 75% of what we would need. All right, so, so it's at 25, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's also, it's a loan application, uh, competitive loan application. There's no guarantee that we would get the loan. Um, and we would have points against us by not having collaborated um, with another town. Um, so you're thinking we might want to just go straight up? I'm thinking, you know, with a, with the, uh, a five-year loan um, with the Union Bank, um, with the interest rate would be 3%. Um, and we would be paying it in total, um, in total interest that we would pay for that five-year loan would be $4,774. Um, the catch would be is that we would be making a payment of $11,154.83 yearly. We had wanted to kind of keep it on the tractor more rental rate of $4,500 right, so a year. To so it would be a little bit more above that we would have to you know, obviously that would be a, a, an increase in, in budget, but that does seem to be the best way to go. We could do that with applying some of the money we have to. Yes, and that would be process. that would be using twenty five twenty thousand dollars from the HERF fund for these two pieces of equipment, mm -hmm. which is another thing we would have to approve. Um, so we basically have a, a couple of motions in order to, to get to an end result. Um, Diana had mentioned at the last meeting that the town of Callis was going in on it, was purchasing a mower and tractor. Thinking of, of well, this is... Thinking of it, yeah. right. And the, they're still thinking about it and um, haven't really come to a conclusion. And, you know, great... I talked to John Raybent one day. Uh -huh. I saw him and yeah. he mentioned it and I mentioned the same thing that we were talking with Kathy yeah. through. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of positive about it, but so right. I'm just wondering if we shouldn't explore that option um, a bit more before we spend the money. Maybe yeah. even if, if they decide to go ahead, maybe even, you know, rent from them for a couple of weeks here and well, there. Well, you know, one of the reasons that Greg would like to have this more um, wood chipper, not wood chipper, but wood uh, brush hog, I guess you could call it, is that, you know, the, we could use it any time. Mm -hmm. um, and he's worried that if we go in on a, uh, an agreement with Callis, that you know they have a lot of road back roads. Oh, quite they, as many as we do. Um, so they and that they would, be, they would, time. they would probably be using it the bulk of the time. And it might be well, hard. have to be shared. But, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So that that was his concern. And um, if they don't want to, if they don't want to share the cost of the thing or they don't want to rent it because you know that they, they uh, wouldn't have quite you know they'd have to give up a couple of weeks of flexibility that yeah, would be nice for that and even like I said even the burner on the other side of it is yeah do we really you know is that something that really is going to matter to these guys we have a greater mm -hmm. the burner we know what it does it pulls the stuff in the greater does it too but yeah the difference well, is this will mulch it. Yeah, the yeah. the burner this the t burner tool would kind of basically act as a, when they when they have to seriously remove berms, the grater doesn't do it. Um, the bucket loader does initially. Um, well, why is there berm in the first place? Yeah, there's a lot of places well, besides the road. There's a ton of gravel out there. And yeah, and the, so the idea with the idea with this thing is supposed to pull this stuff in, uh -huh. and, and it mulches it. Because what happens now is you can just grate it and they got to haul it off. It yeah. gives us trying to recover the gravel, mulch the sod so that you can just grade that stuff into the road, mm -hmm. not have to haul it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the idea behind this. Yeah, and I don't know that you want sod in the road anyways. You really should haul yeah. it off. Not if you chop it up. The, the, the experience that people have had with this is it dries and just blows the stuff away. Mm -hmm. It saves you all that loader and truck time of hauling this stuff away. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's at least what the people who use them said. Yeah, yeah that one, that's a toughie too. Yeah, mm -hmm. burning mowers. Yeah, because we have a tremendous burning problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, speaking as a taxpayer, I'd like to ask if you have looked into the option of uh, hiring out mowing, like a lot of other towns around here do. 
they when we used to do that too. Although we had some local people who did it, but uh, yeah. other towns that uh, Walden, I know in particular, they put it out to bid. So there must be enough people out there doing it that they get big bids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you so get it seems where you like wonder a, how many people do we have working for us, and do they have time? Right, to do that's everything? that's a valid question. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we have time for all these? So guys? my thought, because I had proposed the Burmer part mm -hmm. of it, was yeah. trying to maximize their time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. A little bit of research we've done says it would do that because it would save time mm -hmm. for the employee. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to me that if we buy anything like this, they actually use the stuff. It's got to be used. Yeah, I have that. Yeah. We wouldn't use That's it. That's the firm you're talking about. Yeah. Well, either one. Oh. Brush cutters the same way. I got. Mm -hmm. It's important that stuff gets used. You're right. buying yeah. a new truck this year too? Uh, next year. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that you guys are taking some heat on the taxes at this point, so yeah, we don't know if a it's lot. I mean, you know, to save or not. Nothing we can say, but people complain a lot. The yeah. municipal budget went up 20%, and it's going to be worse if you buy, keep buying stuff. The municipal budget went up 20%? The school budget went up 4%, and the total was about 8%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it is. Okay. It's tough. It's a tough mm -hmm. call. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we have equipment now that does the same stuff, but it's not getting used. So will the new piece of equipment get used? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. This mower. I mean, we hear people come in and tell us all kinds of stuff that's none of our business. But yeah. you know, they they think maybe it'll get passed along, and so sometimes it does. But. The uh, just just the loader with the mower, even using it, is a special skill that somebody would have to learn, mm -hmm. and it's probably going to take up the whole road in some places. So it's not going to be you know you're going to have problems with people passing traffic yeah, and things I don't like think that. It would take up the whole road, and it, it pretty much um, would be. Operating it would be very similar to the tractor that they rent now, because it has a boom and an arm, and you, you know you've got your controls for that. It would be very similar to what be a learning curve for the driver, but right, yeah. But it's got to go slow. Mm -hmm. you know, so you're not gonna. I don't know how long it would take you. Right. I think the other idea behind well, this thing was it could cut a lot of the brush and trees yeah, that's right. hanging <clears> in <throat> the road yeah. right now that you're not getting with the mower. Yeah. yeah. You know, it could it could get branches that are hanging into the road and mm -hmm. stuff like that that you can't get with the mower. So somebody would have to follow along and pick all of them. Well, I mean, there's no there's no magic bullet to any of this stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to pay somebody, to, we've got a. Uh, I mean, I mean, the realistic part is we can come up with with a reason not to do a hundred things. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. any way you do this, there's pros and cons to everything. Because if you yeah. pay somebody with a chainsaw, then you got to have two people to be their chipper. So. My my philosophy is trying to look at this stuff is how can we maximize the number of hours and I I I'm on the fence as far as cost too because I agree that it, you know I mean I fear you buy the stuff and we don't use it mm -hmm. don't use it enough or don't use yeah it doesn't justify also, having it and I also fear that you have enough people mm -hmm. I'm playing devil's advocate too but uh, you have enough people to operate this stuff but on the other hand you don't have a plan deal with the problem that we have if we don't. So I don't, if this isn't the solution, then my comment would be what is the solution mm -hmm. to resolving our our berm problem and our brush problem? Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't see like us getting out of it without break. spending some money. Yeah, have him come in and say, mm -hmm. okay, what can you do next summer? Can you get out and do this stuff with a grader? Yeah. If you can, can't, is then... Anyone who wants this mower? He does want the, the mower and brush cutter. Um, and you know, we could, if we, you know, we could just go with the Burmer, um, and uh, if we thought that that would help, um, and you know, just go back to renting the the tractor and more um, until you know, if, if, and explore other options, um, or we could not get either piece of equipment. I mean, the Burmer is twenty thousand um, dollars, basically. Um, the does that go on the the uh, goes on the loader? What it's designed to do is pull that. We got those giant. There's still it's all over. I mean, if you look at our t our road report, and that's why I, I was doing research trying to find something that could speed up the removal process, because the other process involves the grader, 
has to grade it out and then the loader has to come by and scoop it up and you haul all this stuff off. The idea with this thing is it would retrieve that material and uh, salvage, you don't have to haul it away because the gravel you mentioned, all that gravel you're going to be hauling and throwing. Mm -hmm. um, I've never personally used it so um, I just found it and said well maybe this is something we could do that would save time because yeah. we're going to pay you know, it's not going to be a freebie doing it anyway. We do it if you're using the loader, yeah. if you're using the grader, you're going to be paying time to sit there in yeah. a truck. And so that's all my thing is understanding that it's going to cost you no matter what. What's the least costly yeah. way to do this? The least place, costly so. way is not buying the machine, but is it the most right. cost efficient? That's what I'm trying to say. You're yeah. still going to if you're yeah. going to eat that up in time, which you're going to yeah. obviously be spread out over a longer period. But mm -hmm. yeah, but I don't have the magic answer. I don't. It's always dangerous to propose right. something because you never. It is, if it doesn't yeah. work, then you're the guy that said you should buy that. If they don't want to use it once they get it. You know, it's a well. To, to me, if we buy this stuff, it's got to be used. I mean, yeah, it's got they, to be used. They, they, no, understand, they understand yeah. that. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, I guess it's we weren't looking at getting this stuff till spring potentially. Anyway, we have. I mean, what was the thought? We we could continue to kind Just of look to discuss into it some more. Yeah, we could. Continue. I hadn't heard any negative comments, but again. Yeah. Well, the more comments, most likely of anything, are, are cost. You know, no, and I got it. Taxes and stuff. Yeah. And I've yeah. seen lots of things over yeah. my life where the, the, you always have a negative something mm -hmm. up front. You're going to say it's negative, you got to buy yeah. something, and then you mm -hmm. get it, and it's like, yeah, it worked great. But there's always that, you you don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Because there is, you know, we really look at that time. And I think that we have our 20 year plan of getting rid of these berms, which is a big problem for us. We're spending it in gravel, we're spending it in. Yeah, road maintenance where we're not getting the berms off the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it'd almost be a point where we could just have the road crew in and say, "This is your goal. You know, do this with a grader. If you can't do them, then we have got to get something different. But mm -hmm. try to reinforce using the equipment that we've got. Saves us some money. Do they need some help with that, or are they resistant to no. training on greater? Well, no, but the problem operation? then becomes. With between hauling sand, hauling the gravel, you've only got mm -hmm. two, two people yeah. at the end of the day to work on this. If you put the grader, really to do this berming operation without this tool mm -hmm. is a three-person job. Mm -hmm. Someone on the grader, someone on the loader, someone in the dump truck. Yeah. So you've got to figure three staff people's time mm -hmm. plus all the equipment time. Mm -hmm. And What research we did said you could do this one person, mm -hmm. drive the loader and do this. Mm -hmm. Now, is it that magic? I don't know the answer. I've never actually done it. <laughs> oh, it goes on the loader? It goes on the loader. So someone could, what, what my understanding was someone would drive this on the loader, could pull this material into the road, it would be mulched. You leave it a oh, day you or still two. you have a grader coming behind that, But the grade, they got to grade the road anyway. Yeah. So yeah, you're not, you're not saying no grading, because yeah. you before you're looking that. at yeah. pull it in. The other way to deal with this, having talked to a few road foremen, and even Greg has told me this, um, you grade this material into the road and then the grader basically has to make a number of passes to break it up yeah. and basically spread it, which does work. It's just a lot of time again. Yeah. So you got to look at that hourly rate of the machine. Yeah, and a lot of times these guys don't like to bring stuff in out of the ditches. Well, because of that, because you're bringing in the sticks and the leaves. And, yeah. the, and, yeah. and nowadays a lot of those stitches are lined with stone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is another but you can't another problem. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, it's a toughie. It's a, Right. I'd love to see somebody else is using it and how they're using it. And well, they did. Have they stone mine ditches that they're coming? Well, you're not. You know, the, the berm's not going into the ditch. It's picking up the very top of that right. that that ditch, that uh, back of that fore slope they call it. Just the edge. Bringing yeah. it up so you get the, the water can still get off. There is a. I think they did check in. There's somebody a town in Vermont. It might be Addison. It was somewhere over there because I had checked a lot of other towns. There are a lot of out west yeah. towns and. Yeah. Very successfully, 15, 20 years of using them, and highly recommended it. And then the wow. town, the town of Brandon has this more brush cutter, um, which they've been using. Um, mm -hmm. And Greg, I think yeah. both Gregs took a field trip down, down, down there to look at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and mm -hmm. it was highly recommended to them. So um, did they watch it in action? And they didn't get to see it in action. It was somewhere out on the on the road. They were, I mean, they didn't the, chase it down. They, the people in Brandon, the road crew, told them that they basically use it in the summer. They use it pretty much every day. Um, yeah. I'd be more in favor of that than the other, just mm -hmm. because you you got a good feel of what it can do. Mm -hmm. um, you 
You mean the mower rather the mower. than the burner? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because the mower part of it, you could go back 20 feet on the sides of the road yeah. and mm -hmm. cut all that stuff out. Mm -hmm. And uh, made a lot of people mad. Oh, yeah, in places, yeah. You wouldn't want to take down lilac bushes, maybe. But. Yeah, they do that with the stuff they have now. But yeah, it is. It's tough. You know, every time you get a new piece of equipment, you know, you just, you fear that it's going to, shit, this sucks. We're going to park it in the corner. Yeah, not you use like it. it. That's my fear with anything. With yeah. anything. So, right. yeah, it's Well, tough. you never want to propose yeah. anything because you'll be the yeah. guy that means yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the firmer so, is not outrageously expensive. No. That's a cheap one too. We could actually buy the Burma without borrowing any money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do we want to proceed? Do we want to um, look into the hiring of the mowing? Um, or the, obviously if, we're, if we can't find someone to do that, we've got to get scheduled for the tractor rental if we... Um, uh, I mean, we have done due diligence on both pieces of machinery as far as yeah. machinery, um, and they, it does seem to be, you know, that we didn't get any negative comments about either piece. No. Um, the burner would be the most productive for the town if it works. It's a big gravel so. and save yeah. it. Uh -huh. yeah. The other's just cut and brush one way or the other. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, myself, I, I would lean toward the Burmer and mm -hmm. not buying the brush cutter. Yeah, we're putting it off a year, you know, just so that we don't... Well, one of my theories, whichever way you went, yeah. is not changing too much at once, because two yeah. brand new things, trying mm -hmm. to go figure out, both fighting to use the loader. Yeah. Mm. Right. Now, right. they might not be mutually exclusive, but I also am sensitive to not borrowing any more money than we've already than borrowed. We to, yeah. 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 yeah, I really had wanted this to stay within what we were already spending for Which the moment. It's, not. it's we, not. But we could buy the Burma with the Herf, 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 Herf yeah. money. Get it out. The, the people that um, we talked to, um, I think it was Alan May, who um, yeah. Greg talked to, um, mentioned that the Addison, the town that uses the Burma, that they find that they use it mostly in the early summer, or late spring when the ground is soft. It yeah. seems to be most effective then. And then that's when your stuff's the worst, all the sanding you've done and the right. lack of any maintenance. You can right. go clean those berms off and get the water off the road. Yeah. And that goes on the loader? They would lock right they in both, the They both go on the where the bucket... On the loader. Okay. Hook onto the loader. Yeah. So that yeah, makes you want to use how much you can get done in a day's time, a week's time, is this going to be a month of berming to get all of our roads done? What have we got? <laughs> yeah, lots of is that, yeah. is that like in additional time? I mean, all the grading also has to be done the yeah. same as it always yeah, was. You're going to have to send somebody out on this thing, dedicated to prior to grading. Yeah, yeah, yeah it has to be a, kind of a planned effort. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this one goes so out it's first. Actually more work. Comes along after. Right, but you're, again, there's no. I mean, any of these you're going to do if you're going to solve this berm problem, because mm -hmm. again, the berm problem drives our gravel usage and our need to grade more. Because if you don't get this water off the road, it takes away all your work every time you do it. Yeah, and there's a ton of places around the back road you see where we've got piles Great of gravel. Great big piles out there. of gravel. This would pull in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, of the two of them, I would think that would be the one that would be the most cost-effective because we're re, re bringing gravel in that's just wasted. What's just the there. thought? That I mean, that's yeah. again, I'm throwing out the danger. Well, you know, know it's, it's kind of a long-term benefit. Yeah, yes. I, I, with the mower, you're you're switching one cost for another cost, yeah. but the Burmer benefit would be more of a long-term. It's, it's a movement to try to solve a problem that we have. Yeah, because we've yeah. either got to add more hours to the crew time mm -hmm. to do replacement yeah. with what we have mm -hmm. which can be done but we're it's again it's not free yeah it's not benign you're going to have to add that time you know say make a conscious effort we're going to spend x amount of dollars yeah to go do berm removal come this summer and you could still have two guys just this piece of equipment you could so but I, i'm just my hope and behind. what i my study was that this is going to be more efficient you're going to get more done for a little more bang you can always think about hiring somebody to bring in the sand Okay. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, yeah. we could at some point. Cheaper we could than, yeah. that could okay. happen. Cheaper than using only expensive. So, yeah, anyway. um, what do we want to do here? Uh, do we want to put this decision off for another meeting and think about it, or? I'd say yay to the Burma. 
I'd okay. I, I think that that's really a good piece that. of equipment. Okay. Yeah. We don't have to borrow any money. Yeah. So how, how will we pay for the burma? From the HERF fund? From the HERF fund. So we would basically take that $20,000 from the HERF fund and purchase the burma. So we have in the HERF now? We have... We we have we have a little bit over twenty thousand. Okay. We pretty so much we wipe it out. Pretty yeah. much wipe it out. We're not borrowing any money. Yeah, yeah. We're not we're borrowing any money. And then we would be. So we won't be putting anything more on the taxes at this right. point. Right. We could start rebuilding. We're planning on in the budget cycle starting to replenish that again. Mm -hmm. And if in reality this thing saves us money on gravel, then it's going to pay for itself over time. And time. I'm just hoping yeah. the time too. A lot of this is intangible. Is uh, mm. if you grade a road, it rains, and you got to grade it in three days. That's money. Yeah. Which we're, okay. so we're not getting other okay. roads. So that's kind of so, the hope with this. So who would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Board. Okay, to go ahead and buy it. Second. Okay, so um, let's make the motion um, so that we um, we also need to include the. And as part of that motion, we'll buy yeah. us buy it with the money from the HERF fund. All right. In. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. And then we'll, uh, so we'll be renting the tractor for next year. Um, and we'll Do you want me to quiz some other towns to see who and uh, who's well, we hiring can... out the, the mowing? And yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, yeah. Again, I'll throw my 50 cents out here. I, it seems to me that it would be because of wanting to focus our, particularly with buying a piece of equipment to do it, focus our people's time on road maintenance that we hire the mowing done. Mm. Yeah. But I don't know what the cost is. Well, yeah, right. let's look into what the cost would be. Yeah, it, I mean, it would yeah. be basically 9000 You know, next year, if we had, we would probably have the tractor for mower for two weeks. So basically $9,000 for that. Mm -hmm. So let's see what it would cost to hire somebody to okay. do the mowing. You see, that frees up a person right. to go do other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From what I hear, the person who was doing Callis and several other towns locally is retiring, but maybe somebody else is picking up the slack. Well, I'm a tractor. And and, uh, the business. Yeah, maybe well. he's selling his tractors. Well, or maybe his tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Ron needs something Ron to do with. Which Ron? <laughs> Ron? No. Rathburn? No. Oh, <laughs> okay. Let's move on. If that oh, we still got stuff to do. We are at Okay. So, um, Buckley. Buckley. My day started. So that's coming quick. Yep. Um, I have the contract. What am I supposed to do with these? Give them to the, the people? Guys. Okay. I'm going to try, mine's running out of ink. I could try and make color copies for them on cardstock. Just That'd be so nice. it's. Oh. Sure. Just let me know. So they can frame it, put so it on their wall. It. What yeah. is it? How do you do that? we got to deal with the contract for... Yeah, so we need to sign this contract. Yeah. They sent back, they faxed basically the parts that need to be signed. So this is the official contract. I think I sent it, this to you guys when we first yes. sent it to them. Yep. It was almost a month ago, I think. Um, they have yeah. signed it. Um, so let's um, see. I'll a motion. Yes. I'll make a motion that we execute the contract to repair the capital. Okay. Um, Second. With Daryl Matthews. Uh, yep. as, as, as sent to us. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. So, spot. And then I can, I'll give you, share the particulars. Um, we all need to sign this. Yeah. Every day you look out the window and expect snow. Shh. Washing rain. Yes, so it washes now. So <laughs> they can come anytime. Someone mentioned that. I didn't want to hear about it. Yeah. The wood's not piled yet. So um, I'll make copies of the full <clears throat> contract and then Brandy can have this in the file. Okay. I'll let them know that it's signed. So the other particulars with um, this is that. Um, they now they, um, have been after them to try to confirm the October 21st start date that we yep. had. And um, it, it now appears that it will be either the 25th, which is a Friday, or the 28th, which is a Monday. So they should start on Monday so they don't shut the road down. Exactly. That's, I, I told them that if they needed the road closed completely, whether, you know, if they start on Friday and they're working on the weekend, 
Um, that's one thing. Yeah. yeah, that's one thing. But if, if they would just be starting on Friday, the road would be closed. The, that the least number of days that the road is closed as an inconvenience to the people that live beyond the closure, um, that would be appreciated. So, yeah. Are we going to do any more work on the road up past Mr. Barron's property we, to smooth that up a little bit more for these people when they're... It's the road is in the road is in good shape. The rough parts are the bars that were put in. Right, the water summer. bars are just hard to get through. Yeah, um, it does help slow people down. Right. Um, yeah. So I mean, I I have yeah, a Subaru. Trucks is no problem, but yeah. so a Subaru, Subaru is not dragging no anywhere. I don't think any car. I mean, the two cars that the woman who lives there along the road, she has a little teeny little car. She didn't have any problems. Okay. Um, so I don't think, you know, it might be good for someone from the fire department just to take a look at that road. Right there. If it needed to be used as an emergency during okay. those four days. Yeah, that's that the be? other thought we had was, you know, if the fire truck's got to go to Cabot or something. Yeah, I, I can take a ride. Right. I'm going to also, when, it, when they do close it, I'll set it up with Cabot to be on automatic for... Okay. And something on that yeah. Cabot yeah. road, yeah. 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 So, so if we can get up there, it just might not be fast. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as we know the dates, um, we'll post them. Um, Along on the road, so yeah. that people know. We'll also contact. Um, have you? Did you get any response from the letter? People kind of giving us a phone number or an email. Yeah, to, I did get one call. One call. Okay. I think I got. Carol Ray would like three. to get a phone call. Okay. All right. So part of that letter that we sent to everyone along the road is to give us some kind of contact information, so that when we know the dates, you know, rather than have to send out another letter or. Yeah. Um, which we could do, I guess. Um, but anyway, once we actually know the dates, we'll post it right where the roads are going to be closed, and we'll also contact the people that live on the road to, to let yeah. them know. Um, so, um, yeah, and in the contract, they're obligated to give us a week's warning. Um, whether that'll actually happen or not, is, yeah. um, we'll see. But um, and that's pretty much it. For that, um, so this is I'll give this to Brandy, but I'll keep it in here for it now. Um, so the underground storage tank and the above ground storage tank. Um, there's been a new twist in <laughs> that work, and actually um, could be good. Um, uh, one of the contractors that I um, contacted, I contacted a uh, Larry Martin who put in the the yep. vent whistle pipe. Um, and he recommended this fellow named Curtis Ashline yeah. to do the work. Uh, it turns out he lives in Woodbury, yeah. on Buckley Lake Road. Road. Yeah. Um, and he and I and Greg met, and the two Gregs actually met last Friday um, to look at the project. Um, he said that he could do the whole project. He could oversee the whole project for us. Um, removing the underground storage tank, which um, and getting someone in there for the site assessment and the installation of the above ground storage tank. He sent me a, um, an estimate for that work. Which I think you forwarded. I forwarded yep. to you guys, yep. Um, so he would, he would be, and the town, the road crew would, would be helping with the excavating of the underground storage tank. They would be, once the tank is out, um, they would be filling in the hole where the tank was and then uh, creating the cement pad that the new above ground storage tank would be put on. And then Curtis. So they would pour the pad too? They would pour the pad. Okay, yeah. that was the question I had. Is yeah, they, they would pour the pad. pad. <clears throat> um, and then he would come in and set up the tank. Um, and he would also loan us a tank so, so that we fuel. can put okay. fuel, take fuel out of the underground storage tank. Yeah, it said he would pump out the old tank and yeah. put it in this yeah. temporary tank. And yeah. so that was what, the 10,000? Yeah, it was a, he, his estimate was about uh, $11,000. Um, and there's something else we're going to have to jump on. So, the time, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, um, and so we, we, it was estimated that it would cost us about $1,000 to put in the cement pad, but I think with, you know, with um, the road crew doing the form work, I would be yeah. basically just paying for the cement and, of yeah. course, their time. And then um, we, the other thing that's required with an above ground storage tank is that it's covered, that there's a canopy over it. Oh, really? So we would have to build a canopy over the. Why are they going to cover it? Because it's outside in the. I don't know, that's, that's part of the new. Huh. Part there's of a lot of them that aren't. Yeah. yeah. 
above ground storage tank. He's got the rules. rules. Oh boy, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I assume you studied it already. I have, yeah, and that it does so say. So if we put it up next to the building, could we just put it's it be clean? Oh, it's got to be away from the building. The building. Yeah, it's okay. got to be a certain. So, and of course, the original thought was to, okay, we'll get the above ground storage tank set up right kind of in front of where the underground storage tank is, um, which never felt great to me, but it was a solution to be able to do the two of them at the same right. time. It sounds like this wouldn't need that. This wouldn't need that. We could remove, we'd have an extra tank, because um, the, the guy, um, Curtis Ashton, felt it would be better to have the tank um, further along the town garage building and not sticking out into the, and I, I was kind of feeling that way too. Yep. So, um, so we can pay for this with a zero interest loan um, through the underground storage tank program. We can pay for both the removal of the tank and the installation of, and purchase of the above ground storage tank. Yep. So uh, I'm it's a good kind of, idea. Yep. Yeah, I'm figuring that it will probably cost us probably about fifteen thousand dollars to um, to do everything. Mm -hmm. um, if we were to, you know, we, we had talked about having Gillespie's come and put in the... Uh, um, so we'd run afoul of the listers. Well, yeah, the auditors, actually. That's, I'm sorry, the auditors, yeah. yeah. And we, it would be free. This way, the tank would be ours. We could put do the yearly bid. Um, and, you know, Gillespie's has done the lowest bid, um, but um, it would be, we, we would have that option. It would be um, going with someone else. We wouldn't have to make that five-year commitment. And we can spread this out over five years, so you know, three thousand dollars a year. Um, we could pay it yearly, quarterly, however we wanted to do it. I told the woman that oversees the loan program that we would probably want to do it yearly. I was going yep. to check with Brandy about that. Um, so, um, and it would be what we would do is send in if we want to go with Curtis um, Ashley, we would send in his bid. Um, we would also add the, you know, the town expected costs, so the, let's say $1,000 for the uh, pad, and um, I mean, we could try to get a quick estimate for the canopy, um, you know, some of our local builders um, yeah. could come up with a quick estimate for us. Submit the loan, um, and um, it's not a competitive loan, we would basically you know, right. the law would get it, yeah. and we would get it, yeah. and then um, the town, the uh, program would um, forward us the money with the time crunch that we're doing, whether they can actually process this loan and, and approve it, um, and then have the money available to us before we spend the money. Um, I don't know, but it, it wouldn't, in a month, it's it not wouldn't matter. Process much, yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't matter. Yeah. So, um, does that sound like the way to go? Does that mm -hmm. sound good to everybody? Yeah, if we're going to go this route and yeah. of not just letting another company just put a tank in for us for nothing, but right. if we're going to we, do it this we, way, we, we can do that. We yeah. just right. it, uh, run afoul of the auditors. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a policy. It's not like we have to, I mean, basically what we, you know, our... I just hate our, to give up, giving up that kind of... Cost. Cost, right. You know, get I mean, a tank I, for free. I'm not opposed if Gillespie will just put the darn tank in and do the five year contract. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not either. So um, we, we, we I still, think it's our prerogative to be able to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. We would still have to pay for the removal of the yeah. site assessment. So that would be, and again, we can use this zero percent interest loan. It's a lot less money. It's yeah. a lot less money. It would be a lot yeah. less money. There would be, for us, if Gillespie were to do that, um, there would be the cost of. Um, You're probably talking a two thousand dollar loan instead of a fifteen thousand. Right, and they right. Gillespie also mentioned that they have a tank that they could loan to us during right. this process if we, if we wanted. Um, so as long year. as we're buying fuel from them, we would have the use of their tank. And we're giving them what? Well, a yeah. Year commitment. We we would have to pay for the building of the canopy. Yeah. Um, Either we would have to pay for the pad. Yeah. Um, so basically, we would get it set up for them. They would come and put the tank in and and. Hook it up, install yep. it, yeah, and it would be their tank. It'd be their tank. So yeah. I don't know if we. It says if we have it on the gable end of a structure, mm -hmm. that's considered protected. A, so we're gonna have to do that. If I'm reading this right, mm -hmm. so it shall be protected from from ice and snow. Mm -hmm. And 
shall require it says a on the gable end of a structure right. so we are on the gable end of the structure there's nothing going to be falling on it right so as far as a cover. tree or something like that? Well, they're worried about snow coming off a roof. So what they're oh, saying, right. the tank system shall be protected from physical damage caused by ice and or snow. Mm -hmm. Compliance with this subsection shall be shall require the location of a tank on A, the gable end of a structure. That would make it in compliance. It's protected. Mm -hmm. It's considered yep. protected. Or B, in a secondary containment structure. So that's not a, uh, that's an or. Okay. So we have to do one of these things. So, so oh. I think if we have it on the end of the building, okay. there's no secondary containment structure. Because I just approved a gasoline tank for the sheriff's office on the yeah. end of their building, and yeah. there's no structure over it. Okay. So, so I don't think... put it back where it came from, or even a little further Well, back I thought that's what you were doing. It back. goes right back where the old The, the idea was. would be to put it right where the... Yeah, and it sounds like if they gave us a tank, and Gillespie would do the same. Right. Would just yep. save us a lot of hassle. Mm-hmm. And then it says yep. or in or under a structure. Okay, okay, I didn't get Does it have to be yeah. on cement? Yes. Because yeah. we're going to have to pour them. Yes, yeah, you yeah. do have to pour the pad. There's no yeah. way out of the pad. Yeah. But again, the we changes to they. <laughs> right. This is where I would run the, foul, the problem with these policies. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we'll recover the cost of the fuel that we may get charged too much for yeah. by this 15000 or $10,000 tank right. that we don't be right. buying. Now yeah. we're running a muck of in five years. Right. But then the next guy, you can do the same deal with him, hey. Right. Yeah. Right. And, um, yeah, no, I, I feel pretty confident that Gillespie, I mean, since they've been part of the bidding process, they've had the cheapest amount. Every year. Um, every yeah. year. And this just There's prevents us years. having to go through this long process, which we still need well, to know what the payments would be. And right. Yeah. So all we're doing is buying the fuel. Or setting up a pad and buying Well, we'd have to pay the clean. We'd have to pay for the removal. Yeah, yeah which we'd have to pay for anyway. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah. make it zero, but it makes right. it a few thousand and dollars. And we, you know, we, we received bids for that. Um, for the removal of the tank from one company, it was $2,100. Um, the inspection of the hole to make sure there's no... Yeah, that's that's that, that's yeah. the complete... And that's amount. not awful. Yeah, it would be... It's called a site assessment, so basically what they would be doing is... They're watching you dig They're it watching up. as you dig it up. If there's yeah. any contamination, um, you know, then it obviously has to be dealt with properly. And then what they do is, uh, once the tank is removed from the site, they open it up, they um, take out whatever sludge is in there, um, and then they do something to basically um, make it so that it's safe as scrap metal. Mm -hmm. um, I call it decommissioning the tank. But they, yeah. cut a, they basically yeah. cut a hole in it so they get in there. Yeah. Send somebody in to clean it out. Yeah. I got. I received two Not bids. Not a job I want. I re, yeah, I received two bids for that. One was for twenty-one, two thousand one hundred and twenty-five dollars plus or minus, depending on how much uh, sludge they have to remove, and the other was basically roughly around three thousand um, dollars for that. Um, so the low bid is but enough. Yeah, yeah, it's about a thousand dollars lower. Um, yeah. And uh, you know the the, um, the plus or minus would be um, you know what they have to remove from the tank once it's been uh, taken from where it is. Uh, yeah. Um, it's one hundred and twenty-five dollars a drum if it's just the uh, the fuel oil, um, hundred percent liquid, and then it's one hundred and sixty dollars a drum or for the sludge and stuff. Or so of course they don't know what's in there until they. Yeah. Open it up. But but that's kind of the. Okay, um, so um, it sounds like we're thinking um, to um, go with Gillespie yep. to install a tank, commit to a five-year contract. Yep. Um, and, and give us the price, I mean, whatever they're, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have, we can say, well, you guys didn't even ask them what the fuel is, we can say, what right. gonna, I'm sure they're going to give right. us a percentage. Right. Of, yeah. And... Um, and then hire this. This uh, it's environmental products and yep. service. So uh, they're based in um, Williston. To hire them to for their tank removal. Because we're kind of under the gun with this. Like yeah. No. It, it's, we got yeah, it before the, the cement pad for, for the yeah. ground. Well, phases. because I mean the tank is not legal to be in the ground anymore. So. Yeah. We we had to, we had 30 days to come up with a plan, which uh, we've been right. working on. So right. they're 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 fine with that. They know we're trying to figure yeah. this out. So it's not like we could just put this off for a year. No. Yeah. No. It needs to be. Re we either need to repair it or remove it. Yeah. yeah. My justification toward the auditors would just be we didn't have a budget for mm -hmm. this to go out borrowed money. Right. 
And you know, I think the other, you know, it's a policy. It's a, it's in the best interest. Whatever is in the best interest of the town. Which is I think this yeah. is. Yeah. We're not having to borrow money. We're yeah. not and Susan, Susan Martin, who was one of the others, came to the last select board meeting and just said, whatever, you know, whatever you guys think is the best for the town is. So we did sort of get an okay. I mean, policy is a policy, right. but there are times where. There are circumstances that this um, just makes better sense to me. I guess we yeah. are having to borrow money. Yeah. Or if we are, we're borrowing a little bit. We might even be able to pay that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dollars. we we could probably pay this out of out of, out of the else. budget, or we could borrow and we spread borrow. it out just to make the yeah. Except we're running out of time because we still got to pour cement pad for it. This going. Yeah, this is yeah. Okay. So I'll make that motion that we hire. Okay. Contract with Gillespie for five years. Okay. And so second, with the proviso that they install the tank. Okay. We will pay the for the remediation of okay. the old tank. All right. So let me yeah. So let me um, let you let me I'll just let you clean it up. Yeah. Okay. So um, the motion. Let let me just try this motion. So I I would I will um, amend that motion by saying that um, that the town commit to Gillespie Fuel for a five year contract um, in. In turn, for them installing um, an above-ground storage tank at the town garage, and that we hire um, or award the bid for the removal of the underground storage tank to Environmental Products and Services um, for their bid uh, estimate of two thousand one hundred and twenty-five dollars, um, and that that's it. And then we just want to get, have them tell us what their markup's going to be on the fuel. On the fuel, right? Yeah. Just because we, you know, they're well, we, say it's a percentage. Yeah, we there will. Tell us next we'll, year. Yeah, we'll want to put that out to bid for both the diesel fuel for the propane. That's that's something that we need to to do soon anyway. Well, we so won't have to with the diesel. The diesel, we won't right, do it. Right, because yeah, we're making a commitment. Yeah, just to get a commitment. So that'll yeah. save us. Okay. Bid that. All right. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll just change that to Michael made that motion. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'll withdraw what I was doing. <laughs> All right. This sounded better than mine. Yeah. Um, okay. So basically, just a quick road crew report. Um, almost do 30. Um, the road crew has spent quite a bit of time um, in the past three weeks, uh, committed a, a week plus of work on um, Sheridan Hill Road. It um, looks pretty good. Yeah. Down there. Yeah. They didn't get to complete the work. This was a project that we that will eventually get some grant money reimbursement for with in fiscal year uh, 2020 um, next summer um, for the work as the Minnesota Roads General Permit Grants and Aid program we didn't finish the work um, so the grant report will be finished next summer um, when the they've been obviously working to get the equipment ready for winter um, the Plow trucks so have the mounts on them for the plows. Um, do some work on this uh, side plow for the low pro that got um, torqued a little bit last year. And that's been fixed. That's been fixed. Yeah. Um, just doing other prep work. Um, you know, putting things away for winter too. Um, and uh, Grizz has been getting out, grading some roads, and we took a pretty good hit with the roads with uh, two inches of rain that we got a few We're weeks ago. To We're going to get it again. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, the, but they're and they've been hauling. They did their work commitment, um, work trade with Hardwick oh, yeah. road okay. crew for the hauling of the sand. They did that uh, last week. Um, three days, spent three days, two trucks hauling sand for Hardwick. Um, so, and they I think Greg Parkers is feeling uh, a little more relaxed and being ready for winter. Um, so, um, but they're still, still, still working on it. Um, and then the other thing that we, um, you know we want to talk about is um, the Valley Lake Road Annex uh, Fire Department Annex that we've been talking about um, lowering that road before you know, by the end of winter October gets before yeah. winter gets here. Um, I know the road crew did a little bit of work on the catch basin off the um, school parking lot, which does seem to be working a little bit better. Um, but um, I know Greg is aware that that work you know. To do that work, um, and I thought maybe we could try, maybe try to set up a meeting um, to just to look at it again. Okay, because I know what I wanted to do. If we can okay. just get that road lower than the slab, 
mm -hmm. somehow. I mean, he's going to have to dig. Yeah. I'm thinking it's going to go in there with a loader. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to try to meet about that with sure. this Friday morning? Would you be uh, around? I'm already killed this Friday morning. Okay. I've got right. the asbestos guy coming to the fire department. Okay. So I got to okay. be installed. Okay. But I could do. I haven't got my hand on my phone. Um. um I think. Uh, Thursday could work. I'm just on call. So okay. If, right. if you, it, it's just right. you can say yes. It's just potential. I wouldn't be here. But okay. Why don't we? Sh well, if you're not there, then um, it would be good for you because you're the one that yeah. would be explaining what you want done. So yeah. Um, well, because uh, we are running out of time to get that done. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because yeah, um, I got the gutters put on a while back, and the water's still coming off the road and going right in the building. Yeah. 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 I noticed even with the with the uh, catch basin, you know, cleaning out that catch basin of the culvert, that there is a fair amount of water that snakes around, and it, it's running, right at the moment, it's running back towards the brook and not down towards the doors to the yeah. annex, but it's still... You want to shoot, let's, let's shoot for, is Monday morning work for you, or what days are bad Mon for Monday you? morning's not good for not me. Not good for you. Well, let's shoot for Thursday morning, and then if I get okay. called out... Okay, so like 8 o'clock or 7 yeah. o'clock, or... Uh, let's do... I wish I had my schedule in front of me. Let's do 8 o'clock, I guess. Okay. Well, why don't, um, yeah, so let's just say that's tentative. Um, yeah. And then um, just send a message to Greg rather okay. than me so we don't have to worry about. Just email him? Yep, yeah, just okay. email him. Uh, or so they'll be up there with the equipment to do it or just to. No, we'll just be to, to get a sense of what, what Paul would like done there. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll. Now, are you going to have to dig down? Over in front of Ronnie's, where he's got his little parking area. With those I think it's all got to come down. That's what I'm saying. I know it. I don't know those rocks too. Then to lower that. Right. It's it's a. So that's got to be lower than the road. So that everything. Yeah. yeah. It's a, I don't know. Maybe more work than they get done. That's why I wish I hadn't mm -hmm. dragged on. But I mean, we're also got the potential of use, of paving this road next. Right. Spring is part of this yeah. parking lot paving project, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I haven't looked at so maybe the outcome is going to be we leave it i don't know mm -hmm. i mean that's what i'm concerned of the same thing you are well even if even lowering it some would help would help so yeah or i guess sloping it the other way yeah so what I'm, I'm thinking if he digs in at the pavement because a lot of that pavement's got dirt over it now yeah. we bring that and then yeah we may have to make some adjustments to it to not have to because i'm worried about the other driveways and it's going to be more work than you could actually accomplish right. Yeah. The, the, one of the catches is, is that you know there's a swale, a gentle swale, and in, in the entryway to the annex yeah. building doors, and that builds up with Fills ice up and with snow. Ice in the winter. So then it becomes just a, a straight level it shot. Comes off the road, goes right, right into off the, the building, building, right yeah. into the building. So the only so, thing you do is lower because when the road is lower, then it doesn't happen well, that way. Yeah, yeah. 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 It went other places. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll talk about. It, yeah. So let's let's tr we'll try to meet on Thursday morning and see if we can, what we can do to help with that. Um, so and then just a quick update on the um, transfer switch for the emergency generator. Uh, Brookfield Services will be putting that in place on um, this coming Friday. Oh, they're going to do it. Okay. The school will be closed, so um, mm -hmm. um, they'll, they'll be putting that in place. Um, and I think that's the it. The recycling ramp. Oh, right. What a... Um, yeah. We, why don't we look at that with Greg when we're over there? Okay. If it looks like thing. something they can just tear out with the loader and put it in the dump truck and haul it off. I yeah. think they probably could easy enough yeah. for that. Yeah. That you know that's some that my thought on. It. I mean, it, right. yeah. I don't. We could spend dump a it. ton of time researching who put it in. I mean, we're just right. It doesn't matter who put it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a non-functioning. Right. It needs to be ripped things. out. If they can rip it out and. Yep dump it in the back of the truck, haul it yeah. to the dump. Yeah. It must have been the town that put it in. I mean, that's must have been, yeah. yeah. And it's not on, it's right on the edge of the school, so it's like we could go in, I think it's just easy to tear the thing out yeah, yeah. before someone gets hurt on it. Disappear, yeah. what, one thing I have been wondering is uh, who put in the bridge by the corner? That's of the been road? in for a long time. That's, that's, ever yeah. since I've been in town, that bridge has been there. Yeah. There's yeah. a nice iron bar underneath it, like it looks like an old railroad tie almost. Yeah, railroad support. Ties. But the boards to the bridge are getting rotten. Are getting rotten. So I'm just worried about liability and you know, is that town liability? Is that um, it's um, all on women's auxiliary? Property. Yeah. Is it the did they put it in? Mm. Um, Good question. Probably so some civic minded people put it in. Yeah, it's like one of those things that just got done. Yeah. Whose yeah. responsibility is it, I guess, is the... Ours. <laughs> Probably ours, realistically. I mean, I, I, 
we're the only ones with resources to uh, deal with it. Yeah. And that's a nice spot in the winter. They do a good job with their skating rink year over there. Something else we can go look at and see how much work it would be to mm -hmm. decide how we're going to yeah. deal with it. I mean, we have three things to go look at. Now. Right. Yeah. Okay, um, that's everything on the agenda. We've gone um, long enough, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, I would make a motion that we adjourn at uh, 8.35. Aye. <laughs> Second. Aye.